Do you really need to add CalMag to your grow? Come on, let's talk CalMag. When to use it, why to use it, and how come it's always bottled up in the one? But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, if you want bigger roots for better fruits, you gotta check out Real Growers Recharge. It's like an instant compost tea that holds more nutrients at your root zone, breaks those nutrients down, and makes them more plant available, getting more of your nutrients into your plants. Find out more about Recharge over at realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 to get 20% off your first order. Order. Now let's get back to the show. Come on, high C. Want to jump into this? Yeah, so CalMag, that's actually, I see that over and over again. Almost no matter what the problem is, the answer that people suggest is... More CalMag. Why, why is that such a prevalent meme in growing? That's a good question. Uh, you know, I will say that uh, as far as nutrients go, N, P, and K are your macronutrients. I used to call them secondary nutrients. When I went and did research, they're secondary macronutrients. Calcium, magnesium, sulfur, they're used in such large amounts, especially compared to the micronutrients, molybdium. Mm. Those guys are used in the teeny tiniest amounts. So as growers, a lot of times we focus on the N, P, and K. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't pay as much attention, attention to the calcium, magnesium, and that's why we're running low on it? Yeah, and there also, there's something called cations and anions. It's positively and negatively charged soil particles. Mm -hmm. uh, the calcium and magnesium are positively charged, so that means that they can uh, compete with other, they can compete with each other, they compete with other positively charged cations. So you got to make sure that you can have plenty of calcium and magnesium. It could be stuck to the soil, though. So you got to make sure you get that whole chemistry right. So there's a couple of different reasons why our plants might be lacking in calcium or magnesium. Yes. Yes, sir. CalMag are two separate elements. It's calcium and magnesium. And the reason they're grouped together is because they're both positively charged, so they will compete. Uh, but they're completely separate things. Calcium and magnesium deficiencies couldn't be more different. I want to ask you a question about that. Yes, sir. You say compete with each other. Yes. Help explain why having one might block out the other one. I'm, I'm having trouble with this. They both have uh, double positive charges to them, a cation, so that they're, uh, they want to bond to soil particles. Uh, so they can bond in each, they're each double positive. So if one is there, the other one doesn't have enough, uh, it has the same charge. So it's not enough charge to knock it off. So if you have a whole bunch of calcium or a whole bunch of magnesium, uh, you put a whole bunch of Epsom salts in your soil. Well, you've got all those exchange sites. You might hear a cation exchange mm -hmm. capacity, CEC capacity. If you load them up, imbalance them with all one thing, whether it's potassium, potassium is another one, but uh, calcium, magnesium, you've got an imbalance. Now you've imbalanced to where you've got all those uh, exchange sites that are either have calcium or magnesium, but it's not in the right ratio. And that's why when you buy CalMag at the store, it is in a ratio already. So I'm I'm looking in my or I'm visioning in my head like a roller coaster and there's only 48 seats on the roller coaster. Yes. And if too many of those seats get taken up by the calcium, then the magnesium can't yep. sit on the roller coaster or yep. vice versa. Yeah. And that actually gets into like cocoa and buffering. You can learn a lot about this through that as well. Because what is cocoa? Cocoa is salt. You know, it's grown around salt. And it's got a lot of salt in it, which is only a plus one. It's a plus one cation. So it's just got one plus. So we can knock that off when we're buffering our cocoa core. We can knock that plus one off with a double plus calcium or magnesium. That's why your cocoa is buffered with calcium and magnesium. Mm. Okay, uh, I'm going to I'm going to ask, let's talk about how to spot deficiencies of calcium and magnesium. Okay, so I've got this picture pulled up on screen right yep. now. It's got like this ring of death all around it. I yes. want to know what's going on here. Yes, and what you're going to see after that, that's necrosis. Or you're going to see that leaf actually dying. You're going to see spots in, in our favorite plants. You'll see spots that are showing up once it gets really bad, like brown spots. Mm -hmm. And uh, yet you'll actually see the structure of the leaf. They call this cupping right there to where it, it folds up on itself. And yeah, it's a classic calcium deficiency right there. And the bad news is 
calcium is not very mobile. So once that grows like that, it's probably going to stay like that. The newer growth, hopefully, you'll fix. But there's not too much hope for that leaf. Mobile. What do you mean by mobile? Mobile, I mean it can be transported throughout the plant. So calcium gets deposited in the cell walls, so it's kind of stuck in there. A magnesium is a mobile nutrient. It can flow if there's a magnesium deficiency. That's why you can fix a magnesium deficiency that I'll show you in a little bit. A lot easier than you're going to. You can fix a magnesium deficiency in the foliage. You better get new foliage here, buddy. Okay, so magnesium deficiency. I've got another image pulled up here. And uh, explain what I'm looking for to detect a magnesium deficiency. Yes, this one is called intervenal chlorosis is the fancy name for it. And I think you can tell it's the, it, the veins. The veins are sticking out. Everything else is losing its color. And what do we know about green? Green is where the chlorophyll makes the photosynthesis happen. Mm -hmm. So when it loses that color, it's losing its photosynthetic ability. It's losing all its power. Okay. And so let's go back to real quick, the mobile versus immobile. Sure. If I've got something like this going on, magnesium deficiency, yep. I can add magnesium and it's going to find its way to that deficiency and fix it. Yes. You have a, a much better chance of it. Anyhow, that's when I've had this problem before. I add a little bit of Epsom salts. Mm -hmm. Now you got to make sure you don't add too much because it will compete with other things, but I've had a little bit of Epsom salts and it's fixed it right up for me. Okay. So then that brings up my next question, which is if I've got one deficiency or the other, right? why do I add both Cal and Mag at the same time if I'm only trying to fight one of the deficiencies? If you know what you're doing, you don't have to. The reason why they, you know, I'll just add magnesium sulfate, Epsom salts if I want, if I have a magnesium deficiency. Uh, the reason why it's done where there's always a Cal Mag in the grow stores is because we don't want to squeeze one out. By putting them in the right ratio, we're guaranteed to get calcium and magnesium on, on the, the soil media so that one doesn't get squeezed out. Remember we talked about those double positive charges? Mm -hmm. If you just dump a whole bunch of uh, magnesium or Epsom salts on there, uh, then you try to put calcium on there, all those exchange sites are taken. So uh, especially... The, uh, with things like pure inert media, deep water culture, uh, clay pebbles, stuff like that, hydroton, man, you don't have that same cation exchange capacity. So you really need to keep everything dialed in the right proportions. I could see easily trying to fix one problem and then causing the other problem. Yeah. And that's what's cool about media. I like to grow in cocoa. Cocoa has a whole, it's buffered with calcium and magnesium. So sometimes. It should, yeah, if not, that's why I've had problems. Remember, if you have hung out for the last year, you know I've tried all these cheap cocos and had problems. What we're really doing, when the calcium and magnesium are buffered in the cocoa, uh, I'm able to pull from that. You know, if you look at my grow dots, they don't have a ton of calcium because whether it's the dolomitic lime in peat or any other pre-made soil or the uh, cocoa that has uh, the calcium and magnesium in it, the calcium nitrate or magnesium sulfate, uh, but but that's where I'm getting my calcium from because there is a perfect ratio or there's a correct ratio of calcium to magnesium. Usually you want more calcium than magnesium. Okay. We already mentioned cocoa and I'm just going to give a plug for can of cocoa because they're the best one that I've found so far. But uh, don't even make me get on that because I will tell you, dude, cocos are in in uh, like coastal areas. They have a lot of sodium. Sodium is a one positive charge. It's got one plus. So we knock it off with our calcium and magnesium that are double positive charges. And you need to wash that stuff out. You need to use good buffering solutions. So, yeah, it kind of gets my thumbs up. So besides sometimes running into issues with unbuffered cocoa, yeah. I've also heard people say be careful about using reverse osmosis water. Yeah, that's when they talk about soft water or really clean water that, you know, water doesn't want to be zero parts per million. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, you want to add CalMag if you're, you know, specifically if you have soft water, if you're using RO water, uh, you know, really low parts per million is what I'm saying. You want to add some CalMag in the beginning. And hard water is the opposite. Hard water usually has a bunch of calcium in it. 
And that's why they talk about it clogging the pipes and stuff like that. Okay, so with soft water or like reverse osmosis water, sure. I want to make sure I'm adding some CalMag. What about if I've got hard water? Yeah, hard water has a whole bunch of calcium in there, so you don't need it. You know what you need to do hmm. is get that calcium into the plant, and that's where the microbes come in. Uh, most of the... Uh, Soils have plenty of calcium, and whether it's cocoa has plenty of calcium, it's getting it into that plant, and that's where the microbes come in. Microbes solubilize organic material. All right, so to kind of tie all of this together, yes. I know that there's a bunch of different media out there. I know that there's a bunch of different nutrient ways to feed your plants. Sure. You can kind of mix and match different things. So maybe there's not like a one size fits all solution to calcium and magnesium. I don't think there should be. There's a calcium deficiency that we talked about and a magnesium deficiency. Calcium deficiency a lot of times mean, means your soil media isn't built right. You don't have a, enough lime in there or you don't have properly buffered cocoa. And a magnesium deficiency Cannabis is a magnesium hog. When I was designing grow dots, the, my formulator would go, what, you want more magnesium? And I go, yeah, these plants are different. So these, they're very different. Uh, thankfully, magnesium is mobile. So some Epsom salts that you can buy at the grocery store is your friend. But remember, if you put too many of them in, you're going to disturb the balance. So be careful. Learn your garden. And this is the hobby. Hey, but that is just me. What about you? How do you manage calcium and magnesium in your grow? Do you use CalMag? Let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, please hit that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Share this video with another grower you know. And check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommend. And I know you'll dig them.